So today we're going to talk about Lesson 4 from uh, Science Unit 2 in the Literacy Ready course, which is DNA from Structure to Function. And in this lesson, students will read and annotate Phelan 5.3 to 5.5, which is really the sort of crux of the whole chapter, and it's where students will begin to understand how the structure of DNA really helps explain how it functions. So everything from um, genome to gene to gene express expression, transcription, translation, um, kind of the whole gamut of how DNA really functions in the body. So students will build their understanding of the concepts through a real focus on vocabulary learning at this point. And again, the vocabulary learning is always by concept. So we're getting them away from the idea of memorizing lots of terms to connecting key terminology. And so um, they'll be working on a concept map to be able to do that. So in activity one, uh, students will read and annotate, and annotate feel in 5.3 to 5.5. And what they're going to do is read with the purpose of understanding how the structure of DNA allows for its function. And so as they're reading, it's a good idea to remind them that they need to reflect back on what they did in activity three, thinking about um, how the, they really understand the structure and the components and the pieces of DNA and how that plays out as they're reading about the function. They're also going to be circling the terminology that they'll need to remember and they're going to do something with that right after uh, they're finished reading. So they really need to want to think about what they want to pull out. We also want them to reflect on the analogy that's used throughout this section of DNA as a cookbook. And analogies are great in science. We've been talking about that throughout Unit 1 and Unit 2, but it's a really good idea for them to pin down what that means. So if DNA is the cookbook, what are the ingredients in these recipes? What, what's happening here to make this analogy work? And then how does the cookbook analogy shift slightly when we think about the process of transcription and translation? So how does that cookbook analogy happen? And, and what are we talking about? What are the pieces here? What is the cookbook? What is the recipe? What are the ingredients? And I think that's really going to help drive home what the authors are trying to get across by using this particular analogy. And again, it's a good idea to remind students that while analogies are helpful, they're never a perfect representation. So if they're coming up with some reasons why it's not working, I think that's really helpful too for them to really understand um, a, the purpose of an anal analogy in science, and also B, where that analogy can break down. And so after they're finished reading and annotating, they're going to work on a concept map. So it's a good idea to review the concept map strategy. If they did Unit 1, they're already familiar with this, but they're going to build on it a little bit more. And it's a good idea to talk about you know, we talk a lot about visualizing in science and we've been looking at animations and diagrams, but a concept map is a really another good way to visualize in science and we're going to help them do that. So not only are they going to make a, a straight paper concept map, but they're going to make a movable concept map using three by five cards as well. So the process of concept mapping for this particular section is they're going to circle the terminology while they read. Then they're going to create a jot list of the terms and they can either put that on a sheet of paper or they can go right to three by five cards and kind of make a card for each term. And in a second, I'm going to talk about an optional extension, which is instead of just putting the term on a three by five card, um, they can make it into a concept card. And I'm, I'm going to show you that in a second. But so they'll get all these terms on three by five cards and then they're going to use them to organize and reorganize the idea into a concept map. And so what they can do is sort of lay out the cards on a table and say, okay, this is the process of transcription. And so let's see how all the pieces work here. And then when we're looking at translation, what do I have to move over to translation? Oh, these couple of cards will be working over here as well. So they'll start to see how the ideas are related to one another. Once they have a, a pretty good map, the map that they want it, the way they want it to be, they'll go ahead and draw that concept map. 
And this is something they're going to continue to build on and will become a key part of their exam review um, in just a few lessons. So they want to do a really pretty thorough job of creating a concept map that they can add to as they read more and more. So here's this optional extension. So everybody knows how to use uh, flashcards. That's where you put a word on the front and a term on the back. A concept card is a little bit deeper. This is like a flashcard on steroids. So instead of just having one concept on the front of the card, you have the concept itself, and here it's uh, gastric juice, and the page numbers. So that if a student has a question about it, they can go back to the chapter and page and get right to the um, topic. But Probably the most important idea is at the top, it has a larger concept on the front of the card. So while the, the term is gastric juice, that's part of the digestive system in the stomach, and so that's the larger concept. Then on the back, it has a definition, it has some examples, um, it has all the details that you really need to remember to know everything about this concept. So if students make these concept cards, they can study them alone or they can study them by larger concept. And so they could just study all the things related to the digestive system and kind of put those all together. And then they could put that together into the larger processes as well. So it's a really good way for them to start to organize ideas by thinking about each concept as related to a larger term. If they decide to do these uh, concept cards instead of just a straight old 3x5 card, they already have the larger concepts together and so it'll be really easy for them to lay it out into a concept map on a table because they already know the ideas that go together. And again, this is an optional activity um, that you can use if you want to. So as you're reviewing the ideas of the concept map, it's important for students to remember the components of a good concept map. Uh, in an enclosed space, they're going to represent the concepts. It can be a circle. It can be a box. They're going to use lines to represent the relationship between the concepts, and then they're going to label those lines. So um, causes of, composed of, uh, increases, decreases, inhibits, secretes, whatever it is, they need to understand that relationship. It can also um, help them understand interrelationships between ideas. So anytime that they're connected, they can show that uh, within their concept map. And just here's an example of one that's just sort of a general one that is in the lesson plans and in the academic notebook that just shows one of many, many ways that a concept map can be represented. But it's showing that there's sort of a larger idea, some key details, some uh, supporting ideas, some examples, and then how those ideas are connected. So while not every line needs to show that relationship, the more that they can put in there, the better they'll understand the concept. Uh, once students have that done, they're going to be using this concept map to study. So it's a good idea to remind them that they'll continue to add and add and add to their concept map as they go through the rest of the um, chapter. So that is lesson four. Thank you.